Hey everybody, it's Cameron with Prep for Life. And uh, in the next week or so, I'm gonna be actually taking both of my daughters down for a refresher course, or actually what they call a skill builder at Front Sight. And so I thought today I might take just a couple of minutes and do a quick gear check uh, for, you know, just to kind of show what we're taking down, what we've found to work in the past. So let's get to it, okay? First and foremost, I like a good build hat. Uh, for me, because it's going to be pretty hot down there, I like kind of a trucker style where it's a little bit lighter, very comfortable. But the, the bill of the hat basically keeps brass from coming down uh, between your glasses and your eye. Uh, so that's a big consideration. I am actually taking down a boonie cap as well because it's going to be so sunny. I'll kind of decide between the two. For the girls, these really lightweight, this is actually an Under Armour, but really thin, really lightweight caps. They make these for running uh, runners as well. It's a build cap, keeps you nice and cool. Uh, we found these to be very good, so we've got one of these for each of the girls to use. And for front sight specifically, uh, I picked up a new next belt. And not to say that either of my other two next belts couldn't have done this course with ease, but if I'm being honest, they just came out with the new Titan Gray, and it is sexy. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that at the course. Uh, the reason I haven't picked up a next belt for each of my kids yet is they're still growing pretty rapidly. Technically, um, I could do a next belt and just continue to buy the raw belt and keep the buckle. That may be something we do because they're such good belts. Um, what I did for the girls is uh, we just went to 511 and picked up just some of these basic nylon webbing belts. Reason being, they are nice and stiff, they're gonna hold the gear really, really well, and they're not gonna break the bank. So this is a less uh, costly option than just outfitting everybody with you know, a, a specialized belt, but honestly, eventually I'll probably just end up doing a next belt for each of the shooters in my household. A lot of their training centers around shooting from concealment, drawing from the holster under concealment. Uh, so I tend to like a good kind of stiffer style vest. I've got this Ariat. Uh, vest that's nice and thick. It's a good drawback, um, but hopefully won't be too hot while we're down there. It's going to be high 80s, I believe. When it comes to, again, clothing and protective gear, another good piece of gear that you want to have on you is going to be a good pair of pants. And this is something I've learned through trial and error over the years. Uh, I tend to really like the 511 Strike Pants. This is a darker version right here they work really really well all the pockets that you have being able to, to handle a full edc loadout they're phenomenal but you're going to pay a little bit more for the strike pants specifically too because they are stretchy material when you put them on there's a lot of give they are probably one of the more most comfortable pants i've ever worn recommended to me originally from my good friend solo keep in mind you can always go to these trainings wearing a pair of jeans wearing your regular pants uh, just know that the pockets may not necessarily sustain you for carrying ammunition, carrying maybe a magazine load or something like that. Uh, so tack pants are always recommended, even if it's just something you wear to the range or to a training, uh, it's well worth it. And if, if cost is an issue, I'll put a couple of links down for some pants uh, on Amazon if you want to check those out. Also, LA Police Gear tends to have their own in-house brand. Again, quality is not going to be nearly as, as good as these 511 Strike Pants, but they do have the pockets. Uh, they are going to work just fine for what you're looking to do. I have friends that run those all day long. They work really, really well. I also found a pair of Vertex for my, for my youngest daughter uh, on sale at LA Police Gear, and they've worked fantastic over the years. So a good pair of pants, also a good pair of boots. Um, tennis shoes, wearing them out to the range. Uh, when you're outdoors like that, or to a training just isn't going to cut it. You're going to feel every little pebble underneath your foot. And so strong recommendation is to get a good pair of boots. I personally like the Keens. The Columbia makes some good brands. Merrill, Solomon's fantastic. Just get something with a nice hard sole so you're not going to feel every little uh, rock that comes under your foot. So that's clothing. Let's discuss the guns that we're taking down. So for my girls and for my wife, I've tried a number of different firearms to see what's going to work for them ergonomically. And uh, time and time again, they just keep coming back to the Springfield XD in a 9mm. Now again, this is not meant to start some huge debate. Um, obviously, you know, I welcome your comments down below. But in terms of what consistently my wife and my girls go for when we go to the range, it's going to be the Springfield XD. I have tried the uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P on them. I have tried the Glock 19 on them. You may notice a pattern that I keep talking about striker fires. Um, 
I tend to find that first-time shooters do really, really well with a striker fire just because of the simplicity, the reliability. Um, I absolutely have had them shoot the 1911 as well, which I'm a huge fan of every single one of these guns that I'm talking about right now. Um, just for ease of use, um, we find that the Springfield tends to do really, really well. For some reason, they like the safety features that are on there, but most importantly, it is the spring. So obviously, we'll verify empty weapon, empty mag well. We have found that uh, my wife and my girls do the best in terms of being able to actually rack, rack the pistol the easiest using the Springfield. And then, of course, because it's a full-size pistol, uh, the, the kick is fairly minimal, especially when we're using a 9mm. The only problem I found is that my youngest daughter, um, I'll put the link to the video right here, when she went down, her hand was still a little bit small. And so what we found is that uh, she would be able to grip the gun, but to reach the trigger, her grip would be off just a little bit like this. And so, uh, again, I tried smaller guns on her, uh, you know, the, the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, uh, the Glock 43, even the Glock 42. Time and time again, she keeps coming back to this one. The Glock 42 was probably the closest we could get, but the spring was still a little bit hard for her to rack, and so she kept coming back to the Springfield XD. But because she would wrap her grip farther over to reach the trigger, um, I, I found that the skeletal structure wasn't quite behind her hand. And so what it ended up doing is after four days, uh, we had to ice it, you know, it was, it kind of turned into a little bit of more of a repetitive stress injury, no permanent damage or anything like that, but it was just harder for her to maintain control, uh, and accuracy over the firearm over the long term like that, uh, when she's gripping. Now, if we go out to the desert and we put a few rounds down range and it's not a long term thing, she does great with this gun, but that is definitely consideration when you're talking about several days worth of training. But uh, for us, that's what we found. Definitely feel free to check into the XD. If you, like I said, if you've had different experience with different firearms, please go ahead and leave me comments below. I'm actually gonna be taking down my Glock 43 just because that tends to be my everyday carry. I know officially that particular training facility does not like uh, pocket guns. Um, it's something I run every day and it's, it's kind of almost in between a pocket gun and a, and a full size. Um, so that's my hope. Again, I'm, I'm taking a backup gun. I'll take my Glock 19 probably uh, uh, as my backup in case there's an issue there, but luckily they take the same round. So uh, that leads me to the next consideration is obviously ammunition. So I've loaded up uh, 500 rounds for each of us. Again, this is a two day skill builder refresher. The ammo requirements are about 400 per person. I've loaded up 500 per person, and that should give us a little bit of uh, leeway there. Luckily, with this facility, they have an ammo store on site that I can pick up extra rounds if we need it. Uh, so that's good. One of the other things that I would also recommend is a good range bag. So I'm actually running the Midway USA. This is kind of their larger, it's not the largest they make, but this was a large kind of in-between. It was, at the time, a few years ago, it was about 50 bucks. It's probably gone up from there. Let me see if I can find the link and put it down below. Um, I found this to be awesome. Probably a little bit larger than most people would need in a range bag. Uh, but for me, it's fantastic. You know, one, two people, when we go solo and I take like just me and one of my kids to a four day, this ends up being perfect for all of us. But in this case, because there's going to be three of us, I, you know, I would strongly recommend setting up a bag for each person going so they can take their own gear, you know, ammo requirements for the day, take their head headsets, things like that. When it comes to hearing protection, Front Sight happens to be one of the institutions that requires electronic ears. So at the basic form, your electronic ears are gonna be the big earmuffs uh, as you fold these out, but they're also gonna have an electronic component. So this right here would be your microphone. It's gonna allow you to hear the outside environment electronically through these microphones up until a noise happens around you that's above a certain decibel level, and these use sound-activated compression to then shut off the microphone and basically turn themselves into a uh, hearing protection earmuff. So they're really, really helpful, especially in a training environment. You can hear what's being said, but when the time comes that shooting happens, uh, these basically just keep your hearing safe. So I've got a pair for each of us. This happened to be the Champion brand. I found these at Walmart. I'll find a link, but I found these to be probably the most cost-effective of the electronic earmuffs. They're very, very comfortable. Obviously not much to look at. And if I'm being honest, they have a little bit of a tinny sound coming through the microphone as compared to the other ones out there. But 
bang for the buck, I mean, they are very cost effective. The alternatives to those would be the old classic Howard Lay. Uh, these are an outstanding uh, headphone when it comes to electronic hearing protection. They're nice and thin, low profile. Uh, battery requirements are really, really simple. I think you're running off of basically two AAAs and uh, they just sound really good. They're always very, very smooth. The sound activated compression is very smooth as well. Uh, I can't recommend these highly enough. Uh, they are going to be a little bit more than, let's say, those Champions, but definitely worth the money, especially because they fold up so nicely. Uh, the other ones that we have for my other daughter are the Peltors. As you can see, these are also really low profile. Uh, you'll find a lot of both these and the Howard Lays on, on any range that I've been to because they just work really, really well. Again, very smooth. You'll pay a little bit more, but very comfortable. Uh, the, the activated compression works really well. And, and this just right here is a little bit of a padding. Uh, actually, a good friend of mine, Solo, gave these to me. Uh, and I've loved them ever since, so I've just kind of kept them on there. I also have my original pair of Walker electronic ears. Again, I'll put a link to the video right here. These are the Walker Razor. And these are the ones that go around your, your neck. As you can see, these have had some wear over the years. Go around your neck. They actually have Bluetooth included. Pull these out, put them in the ear, like a, like a actually feel just like a pair of, of foamies that you'd traditionally use. And same thing applies. You've got your, your electronic version, hearing what's going on around me, kind of a, a hearing enhancement, but when the loud decibels go off, it's gonna compress that sound into just a regular set of hearing protection. These are great. I've really enjoyed using these. Uh, they worked well for me and because they're rechargeable batteries, um, I, for, my, for my girls hearing protection, I always carry a baggie of AAA batteries. These I just bring power bank and recharge them in between shooting sessions. And then also, guys, I picked up a new set of walkers. These are the more cost effective, the lower cost uh, kind of in the ear foamies. And I have not had a chance to use these yet. So this will kind of be the maiden voyage. There's no Bluetooth in these, nothing fancy, but it's a foamy tip. You turn these on, they give you um, hearing enhancement up until the loud noises, then the sound activated compression kicks on. These are just a simple around the neck and in the ear. I'm excited to try them. I'll, again, I'll get some footage, uh, give you guys a full breakdown on these and let you know what I think. But cost-wise, I'll, I'll link to them down on, uh, on Amazon. I think I paid around $60 for these and I'm super excited to use them. Cost comparison wise, guys, that's not going to be far off from the other hearing protection that I showed you, the Howard Lays, the Peltors, even some of the other nicer brands. Uh, that's right in line with what they do. The benefit to me was that they are not over the, ear, over the head earmuffs. And the reason that that becomes attractive is that when I'm wearing sunglasses, hat, and over the head earmuffs, sometimes that's a long day, right? You're going to start getting a headache after too long, uh, depending on who you are. These definitely make a long day of shooting just that much easier. And it allows me to, like I said, wear a boonie cap um, instead of, you know, uh, a regular baseball hat. So again, all in all, comfort is definitely consideration there. Lastly would be holsters. Okay, you want a good outside the waistband holster. Most of these training facilities are not going to allow you to run something that's inside the waistband. Uh, generally, they stay away from leather. They want something that's going to retain its open form when you're holstering and, and unholstering. Um, and so what I have what I come back to time and time again is my outside the waistband holster. This is the Kydex that I picked up from Concealment Solutions. I'll put a link to the video right here. Phenomenal. This Cobra holster has uh, never let me down. Um, I've put it through its paces. It has always held up perfectly. So again, I have this for my Glock 43. I have this for my Glock 19 with a light bearing. This is uh, with my Olight Valkyrie PL Mini. And uh, that'll kind of be my backup. But again, with the, with the easy on, easy off clips, I've done training with this one specifically in the Glock 19. Worked great. Uh, so I'll get some footage down there of that. But honestly, guys, uh, get, a good, get a good holster. These are the corresponding mag pouches that come with it. Uh, each training that I've done there requires an outside the waistband holster and two mag pouches because you essentially are going to need at least three mags, one in the gun, two on the hip, and, uh, and that tends to be how we go through. So the quality and workmanship at, at Concealment Solutions, fantastic. I would recommend these guys all day long. He, he makes a really good product. So I am always going to recommend bringing a good cleaning kit. This is kind of my overall cleaning kit, guys. This includes everything, all my solvents, my CLP, 
my punches, my hammer, my tools, um, all of that's in there. And that goes with me whenever I do one of these trainings. And then throughout my range bag is a couple of other considerations. Okay. So, uh, for one, I've got glasses wipes and glasses cleaner. You'd be surprised at how much these, these glasses can fog up safety lenses. That's a big thing. Um, additionally, any medications that you might need, and especially maybe some ibuprofen, some Tylenol, have that on hand. Guys, one thing that I also love having in here is going to be super glue. Um, again, this is, these are tips and tricks that we've learned over years of doing these courses. You get a little nick or a little cut, uh, super glue is going to be the easiest way. Just disinfect it maybe with an alcohol wipe or something like that. And then just rather than the band-aid, throw some super glue on there. It's going to hold so much better. Uh, additionally would be sport tape. Okay. Uh, may sound funny, but sport tape will save your life, especially if you're doing a longer training, something like four days or so, uh, you're going to feel it in your hands. You're going to be handling a, a tool that you don't necessarily handle all that often. And so it's going to rub your hands a little bit raw. I, I find that sport tape by the end of those trainings saves my life. I may get some snickers from some friends, but it, it definitely helps me to continue to perform and, and do the things that I need to. Lastly, I would always recommend going and piling in um, some electrolytes, maybe some either Gatorade powder or Powerade powder, have that on hand, uh, definitely plenty of water, and then maybe some snacks, some granola bars, some cliff bars, something like that to kind of keep you going. Uh, other than that, guys, that is that I find to be uh, the best recommendations I can give, especially if you're doing front sight. Uh, they always end uh, most of their sessions with a skills test, and that's of course optional. But what I what I like to do is right before that skills test, I'm going to pop maybe some ibuprofen to get rid of the aches and pains of training over the last few days. I'm going to hydrate maybe with some electrolytes, maybe take a little bite of a power bar, just get myself topped off. All of that about 30 to 45 minutes before the test, and that gets me just nice and fueled and relaxed and ready to perform at my best. So again, guys, that's that's just what I found to be. Uh, useful. Let me know what questions you might have down below. And uh, also don't forget to give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.